Hi, this is Amy Romeo of the jewelry and crafting blog, amyromeo.com. And in this channel, I share fun and easy jewelry making and craft projects. Today in this video, I'll be showing you how to make very easy holiday earrings with a Cricut. I'll be using the Explore Air 2 because I know so many of you have that machine and you wanna know how to make faux leather earrings with it. You absolutely can. I'm gonna show you from start to finish. First, we'll make a simple teardrop and then I'll show you how to embellish the teardrop with some heat transfer vinyl. I'll have the SVG patterns for these earrings and a few other holiday designs on my blog in my resource library, so you'll be able to grab those and craft along with me. So if you're ready to dive in, let's get started. To make these easy holiday earrings, I'll be using the Cricut Explore Air 2. You can also use the Maker, of course, or the Cricut Joy. I'll be using the Explore Air 2 because so many people have this machine and they think they can't cut faux leather with it, but you absolutely can using just the standard fine point blade that comes with the machine. If you have a Joy, I will link to a video I have about how to cut faux leather with a Joy that you'll want to check out if that's the machine that you're using. You'll need a purple strong grip cutting mat and a green standard grip cutting mat. This one is for cutting the faux leather, and this one is for cutting the heat transfer vinyl that will apply to the faux leather. You'll need some blue painter's tape, and I will use an Easy Press Mini and a heat pressing pad to apply the heat transfer vinyl. You could also use a regular Easy Press or even a home iron on a very low setting with no steam. I also have a little Teflon sheet cover pad that, it, that I've cut from a larger piece of Teflon sheet and um, you can use that or parchment paper. You'll need a weeding tool of some kind for weeding the heat transfer vinyl. I have my Cricut one here and I also have um, a more fine point uh, pin pen weeding tool. This is great for weeding small areas. And I have some curved scissors for trimming away any fuzzies from the faux leather. And I have just regular craft scissors for the Earring hooks, I have two pair of flat nose pliers and I have earring hooks here and some six millimeter jump rings. Before we get into the design, I wanted to show you, I like to punch my holes with a 1 16th inch hole punch and you may wanna add one of these to your craft making supplies if you're gonna be making a lot of earrings. And I say that because I will be giving you this teardrop shape to play around with and I'm gonna give you two versions one has the pre-cut holes and one does not. And I just wanted to show you that sometimes the hole cuts out cleanly, for example, on this one, and sometimes it doesn't. And it really just depends on the material. A lot of people get frustrated about the, the cutting the holes and it really just, it's the luck of the draw. So what I like to do is not rely on how the Cricut will cut the hole for me. I like to have my hole punch so if necessary, I can just punch the hole from the very beginning, or if the hole is partially cut like this, I can just trim the hole with small scissors, or I can use the hole punch and finish punching the hole where the Cricut started it. So you can decide which version you wanna try cutting. If you try the one with the hole and it doesn't work for you, don't get frustrated. Just get yourself one of these little punches. They're not that expensive and have it on hand and then you can just punch your holes whenever, you're, whenever you want. The other thing I wanted to show you was I will be showing you how to apply a design to this faux leather shape. But if you wanted to go even simpler than that, Amazon and Etsy, they have these great assortment packs of different holiday faux leathers for every holiday. So if you wanted to just make a one layer teardrop shape earring and attach an earring hook and have yourself a pair of earrings in five minutes, get yourself some cute patterned faux leather like this and just cut out the teardrop shape. So I'll show you first how to do this and then I will show you how we're gonna add a layer of heat transfer vinyl. The heat transfer vinyls, I, you really don't need a lot of it and I just have different glitters and solids. It's up to you, but this is a very easy and fun way to decorate some faux leather earring shapes. So let me show you how to get the SVG cut file from my resource library on my blog and then we can get started. The SVG files for these earrings are inside of my resource library on my blog at amyromeo.com. You'll want to click on the menu bar here and if you don't already have a password for the library, you'll click get a password 
and enter your name and email address and you'll receive an email instantly with the password to the library. Then you'll return to this page and click on resource library and inside there you'll see every design I have has a name and a number. So you'll locate the name and the number however you want to search in the library. This will be pattern number 160 and you'll click on the little link to download the files and they will download to your device. They will be inside a zipped folder and you'll need to unzip the folder before you can upload them to Cricut Design Space. And in Cricut Design Space, we wanna start a new project and click Upload, Upload Image, and then we browse to where the unzipped folder is and we'll click on the SVG file. And this will show us a preview of the shapes and we'll click Save and then click the designs again from this row and click insert images. So you'll see here that I have the two teardrop shapes, one with pre-cut holes and one without. And then I have six different holiday designs for you to cut out of heat transfer vinyl and press onto the shapes. But as I mentioned, I first wanna show you just how to cut the shapes out of a printed holiday faux leather. So I'm going to go over here and click the eye to hide all of these little holiday designs for the time being. And then I will show you how to cut one of these teardrop shapes first. So I'm only leaving the one that I wanna cut, which is the one with the pre-cut holes, so you can see how that works. So I'll go ahead and click the Make It button. This mat does not need to be mirrored because these shapes are identical, forward or backward. And the only thing you'll want to do here is make a note of what size faux leather you want to put on your mat to cut the shapes out. So I'll want to cut a piece of faux leather a little bigger than three inches square. If you wanted to, you could drag them apart a little bit if necessary. I think that's probably good. And I'll click continue. Since I'm using the Explore Air 2, I need to make sure that my machine is set to custom. So let me go ahead and do that. And now that my machine is set to, the dial is set to custom, I can choose faux leather paper thin as my preferred setting. If you don't have this setting already set as a favorite, you can click on Browse All Materials to locate it. If your dial is not set to custom, you won't see this as an option. If you're using the maker, you don't need to turn a dial because the maker doesn't work that way. You'll just be able to select faux leather paper thin as your setting. So go ahead and click on that. And I always like to use more pressure when cutting faux leather with any of the machines. So now that we're set in Cricut Design Space, let me show you how I prepare my mat to cut the faux leather. So to cut the first set of very basic teardrops, all you need is your printed faux leather cut to the size you noted in the mat preview screen and some blue painter's tape and a purple strong grip cutting mat. So you'll want to put the faux leather pretty side down in the top left corner of your mat, which corresponds to where the mat preview showed you the shapes we're gonna cut. Press down all over with your fingers and then use some blue painter's tape just to tape down. Now I did want to mention, you'll see that the front of this material is printed and the back is just white. If you wanted to, you could add some something to the back to make the earrings look more finished and professional. Sometimes it also helps to add some structure and make the earrings not curl. That's a little more of an advanced technique, but I have a whole video about how to add a back to faux leather earrings. So I will link to that and you can check that out. So I've got this all taped down and I'm ready to load the machine into the mat. Whenever you're cutting faux leather on a Cricut, you wanna make sure that the little star wheels, these white wheels are moved off to the side of the roller bar so they don't roll over your material. And I'll press the double arrow button to load the mat and press the C button to begin the cut. So anytime you're cutting faux leather with a Cricut, you wanna use a sharp weeding tool when the cut is complete, before you unload the mat, and double check and make sure that the cut went all the way through. And you can just kinda of lift up a corner, and I can tell that this cut 
went all the way through. So I'm gonna unload the mat. But if the cut didn't go all the way through or there was some parts that were sort of stuck, you can just press the C button again and repeat the cut as many times as necessary as long as you haven't unloaded the mat. And again, just a reminder, this is just the standard fine point blade that comes with the Explore Air 2. So I'll unload the mat and I'll just peel up the little shapes and we'll check and see how the Cricut cut these little holes and it looks like they cut this material pretty well. So that was good. I will set these aside and I'll show you how to cut the layered earrings and then I'll show you how to put the earring hooks on all of them at once at the end. Now we're back in Cricut Design Space and I've unhidden all of the layers so we can see them all again. And this time I wanna show you how to cut the teardrop shapes that don't have the pre-cut hole. So I will hide the pre-cut hole ones and I'm gonna be cutting these from green faux leather and I wanna cut these little trees out of silver glitter. So I will hide all of the other shapes. And these are already perfectly sized to fit on top of the little teardrop shapes. Let me show you. Oops. It'll fit just like that. So we don't need to make any other adjustments. I don't even need to put them on the teardrop shapes, frankly. And then we'll just click the make it button. In Cricut Design Space, we'll separate our two different mats, the faux layer, faux leather mat and the heat transfer vinyl mat. So again, I'll separate these just a tiny bit. I'll make a note of what size material I need to put on my mat, which again is about a little bigger than three inches square. You don't need to mirror this mat. This mat is our little tree mat and you could mirror it if you wanted to, but really because it's a tree, it looks the same left to right. It's not like it's letters or some other design that needs to be symmetrical. So I don't need to layer either of these mats now. Again, I'll just make a note of what size material I wanna cut and click the continue button. The faux leather mat again, will use the faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure. And for the little trees, since I'll be cutting those from glitter iron-on, I will select glitter iron-on. And I use Caesar glitter, which is a thicker glitter. So I like to add more pressure. This is just something you'll have to experiment with with your machine. If you're not using glitter and you're using just solid iron-on, then I like to use the washi sheet setting, or you can use the vinyl setting to cut those materials with the default pressure. So let me show you how we cut those mats and make these earrings. The first mat that we'll cut for these earrings is the faux leather mat. And I used a piece of this green faux leather. I cut it to size and taped it down with blue painter's tape. I just reused the same blue painter's tape from the previous mat. So I like to store my blue painter's tape and reuse it. Um, you can actually use it quite a bit before you need to get rid of it. So just line up the mat. Load it in and press the C button. Again, we'll check the cut. And that looks good. And these little shapes just peel right up. For the second mat, I've set design space to cut with uh, the glitter iron-on setting. So here's my glitter iron-on. I'm gonna put it shiny side down in the top left-hand corner of my green mat. Load it in the machine and start the cut. If you're new to um, using heat transfer vinyl, glitter vinyl is beautiful, but it can be a little bit tricky to weed just because it's hard to see the lines on the back. So you'll wanna have a, a good strong lamp nearby to help you out, but I just usually make a little crack and kind of look for where there's lines. And we're just gonna weed away the excess 
of our little trees. I'll cut these apart. And I'm warming up my Easy Press Mini on the lowest setting. And while that's heating up, I will show you how I punch the little holes. So there might be some little fuzzies. And if there are, then you can spend a moment just trimming them up with some small curved scissors. The 1 inch hole punch has a really small little hole, which is great for this. And it works just like a regular hole punch. You'll wanna make sure that you're not too close to the top and punch. And again, you can use your sharp weeding tool if necessary. And then I like to get the hole in the exact same location on the other earring by flipping them over so the front sides are touching and then use the first hole as a guide for the second hole. And that's that. And our, the Easy Press Mini is ready to go. So I'll put these here. And just line up our little trees. I like to press one at a time. Put down a cover sheet, like a Teflon sheet or a piece of parchment paper. And with the Easy Press Mini, I'm just gonna press down. And peel away the cover sheet. If when you're peeling, the uh, glitter heat transfer vinyl peels up, that means it needs a little more pressing time. Isn't that cute? These are warm, so I'm gonna place them under something heavy to let them cool in a nice flat position for just a few minutes, and then I'll come back and I'll show you how to put the earring hooks on both of these earrings. I want to show you two different ways to attach an earring hook. The first way is really easy and doesn't require any tools. This is called a ball ear wire hook. I got these from Hobby Lobby. This is what the package looks like. They also have them on Amazon and at other craft stores, but it's a very simple hook shape that you just thread your earring shape onto and pull down. And then you can squeeze this little ball a little tighter and that's it. Easy way to make earrings without the hassle of jewelry making pliers. But if you do wanna use traditional earring hooks like this shepherd's hook, then we will use flat nose pliers and there's just a small thing we need to do first to the earring hook to make sure our earring will hang straight. So I'll use one pair of flat nose pliers and I will hold the earring hook in my thumb and forefinger tightly. And then I will use the flat nose pliers to grip the loop. And I'm just going to twist with my wrist 90 degrees to turn the loop in this direction. And that's gonna help us get our earrings to hang straight. So once you've turned your earring hooks, then you'll want to open jump rings to attach the earring to the earring hook. And the way to open jump rings, the easiest way, is to put the little opening of the jump ring facing 12 o'clock and then hold each side of the jump ring with a pair of flat nose pliers, basically at three o'clock and nine o'clock, and just twist open with one wrist. Hold on to the jump ring that's open, thread on your earring shape, thread on your earring hook, making sure it's going in the right direction. And then with the same pliers again, just twist in the opposite direction to close up the jump ring. And I'll show you that again quickly. The jump ring opening is up. I'm twisting with, whoops, twisting with one wrist. The idea is you never want to distort the shape of the jump ring out of a circle. And that way, when you slide it back, it slides right back into position. 
So obviously you can do this sort of earring with all the little um, designs I've given you in the SVG file. You can make a whole variety of different combinations with the different designs and different faux leather choices. And if you wanna make very simple and easy earrings, just one teardrop shape, then enjoy shopping for some different fun holiday patterns. And that's it, those holiday earrings are complete. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and you're feeling like you have the information you need to get started making earrings with your Cricut. Remember to grab the pattern, the SVG files for these earrings from my blog. You can use just the teardrop shape if it's not the holidays, or you can decorate with the added holiday embellishments to have fun and easy earrings for a holiday party or to give us gifts. Also on my YouTube channel, I have a lot of cool earring tutorials patterns for the holidays and patterns for year round. So I hope you'll check them out and I'll see you in the next video.